Hello! Okay, so in this video we're going to start our discussion of the next phase of the Early Iron Age, uh, and that is Early Iron Age II, which lasts from about 1000 to 750 BC. We said in Early Iron Age I, not a lot's happening. In fact, there's a great reversion from the level of sophistication and civilization we see in mainland Greece in the Mycenaean period, um, back to just a lot of small farming villages, more typical of the late Neolithic or early Bronze Ages. Um, but by um, early Iron Age II, we begin to see some signs that um, society is redeveloping and that there's a bit more sophisticated social structure starting to develop in the regions of mainland Greece. Uh, so one of the things that we see is evidence that communities start to grow a little bit and to develop a um, figure who serves as a chieftain. Uh, and so this chieftain in Greek, the term for him is the Basileus. Right, the Basileus is our word. Um, at least that's the word in the later Greek language, and so we use it for this early Iron Age chieftain. So what is our evidence for this chieftain? There's still no writing, for, for, um, for instance. So we don't actually have texts that say, oh, there was a chieftain and he had these duties and, and so forth. Um, instead, what we are looking at is archeological evidence, which is our, our main evidence for the period. So we have the existence at certain sites, early, certain early um, Iron Age II sites in the Greek mainland, um, we see the existence of what we might call chieftain houses. Uh, they are fairly large apsidal structures, and so apsidal means that um, one end, instead of being straight, is rounded, right? What's called an apse, if you've ever studied like basilica architecture, church architecture. Uh, so two exam examples of these would be at Nicoria and Lefkandi. So we're actually going to go turn over to our map, have it at an angle here. Um, so Nicoria is a site in the Peloponnese out in the southwest, it's about here using just little bits of sticky tape. Um, uh, Left Condi is on Euboea. So Euboea, remember, is this big long island just north of Athens and Attica. And uh, Left Condi is kind of in central Euboea, right around there. And so at these two sites, we find evidence for these larger uh, apsidal structures. And remember, early Iron Age one saw no monumental building. So this would be an example of um, a kind of low monumental building. It's not huge like a, a Mycenaean palace, but it's bigger than the usual homes and um, buildings that we find in early Iron Age I uh, villages. So this is um, just a sketch of the layout of the Nicoria uh, building. Um, so it's not gigantic, right? It's not a palace, but it is a nice big uh, space. It is built of the same materials as all the rest of the buildings in Nicoria. It is um, made of stone foundations with a mud brick wall. The roof is thatched and then the earth is just rammed earth. They just smack it down really hard. But the, the shape of it may be a little bit familiar. So it is upside, it's got this curved end, um, but it's got a porch here, a little antechamber, and then a large inner chamber with a, a sort of a circular spot right here. So it's, it's reminiscent of a Megaron complex in a Mycenaean palace, right? An, um, porch, antechamber, and then the um, Megaron itself where you meet with the king, uh, or the Wanox, with the pillars, the four pillars, and the, the circular hearth here. Uh, so it very well may be derived from it or based on that. Uh, there's been a suggestion that uh, it has served as the home of a chieftain, just like the, the Megaron complex was probably the meeting place where people met with the Wanox. There's also been a suggestion that it was a religious center, that rites happened here, that it served as communal storage, and it might be one of those three, two of those three, all three of those, some other things thrown in there as well. It could have had multiple functions, certainly. And in this, it, you may be thinking back to the early Bronze Age and the House of the Tiles at Lerna. And it's true, it's similar, right? Both the House of the Tiles at Lerna and the Chieftain House here at Nicoria have that suggestion of um, a, a sort of pseudo-monumental building that kind of appears after a period of just uh, Greek civilization being stuck in these small farming villages uh, and then evidencing some more sophisticated social structures. Um, and so that's what we see in Nicoria. And here's just a little reconstruction of what it would have looked like. I don't think I made it look upsidal. Um, but yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's got this thatched roof. Here's the little porch out in front. It's, it's not really much that, that would look special to us today. Um, but given what has preceded it, it it's very notable. Um, right? it's, it's quite distinct from the things that um, we see elsewhere in the period and in early Iron Age I. 
Um, so the other major site where we find an example of this is, as we said, Left Kandi and Eubea. We're not going to go into that in detail here because we're going to talk about that much more in class. You're going to look at um, the evidence surrounding that site, what's known as the Left Kandi Heroin, and we'll discuss it in class. So we can say a couple other things about this early Iron Age II period. Um, one is that we do see some increasing material culture, uh, increasing sophistication of material culture. Um, the pottery, for instance, to go find my eraser here. Um, we said that early Iron Age I is defined by the proto-geometric pottery. We do see the development by the 9th century BC of what's known as geometric pottery, which shows even greater sophistication. We begin to see um, a, a greater range of possible designs. We begin to see animal and human figures, but again, we'll talk about that more when we look at the pottery of this period. Um, so we have the geometric pottery. We begin to see the production of some luxury goods. We find sites that have gold jewelry or ivory carvings, for instance. Uh, and this is especially interesting because it suggests that there is some trade going on. Greece doesn't have access to these raw materials, so they must be gaining it through trade somehow. Um, maybe not directly, but maybe by a chain of people trading throughout the Aegean um, that's bringing it to them. But it also suggests some kind of surplus to trade with, right? You have to have something to give in order to, to get something. So um, there has to be some kind of increased prosperity that allows for that. Much of the evidence, though, for the early Iron Age um, comes from the Homeric poems, right? So we, so we don't have writing, but we do have evidence from these two epic poems, the Iliad and the Odyssey, which probably were composed in this period and therefore provide some evidence for what life and society was like in this period. And we're going to discuss those in much more detail in the next few lectures. Um, so we're going to stop here for now um, with early Iron Age 2. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, bye.